Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Welcome everybody. I'm going to be talking about a TV show, Lost in Space. Now this will be the newer one, which came out in 2018. Oh, I think it, yeah, I think season two is 2019, going into 2020. So this is a reimagining of the original series from the uh, 60s or 50s. A friend told me about it. I had seen the premiere and it just fell off my radar. Uh, I think it was a 1965 series. So a friend told me about it. Like I said, it dropped off my radar and I was able to catch it and I really enjoyed it. It's got some flaws, minor, but overall it's fun. Uh, I was a fan when I was a kid of the original. When I started becoming a teenager, not so much. And in adulthood, I just had a fondness for the old TV show. This is a pretty good reimagining. I think it's um, done really well. There's a actress, uh, Molly Parker, who's incredible. She's so good in everything. The cast is really good. There's just scenarios and stuff that I thought they would outgrow. So I'll talk about season one and season two. They're short seasons, basically. They are... Uh, well, they're 10 episodes each. They're functioning in the way they present each episode. Doesn't work so well with me. The formula they use. And when the first season starts, you're wrapped up in it. You're finding out things. And you kind of get pulled along. And the, those things don't matter too much. But you could see it in its structure but it's enjoyable it's fun um the new twist on the sci-fi classic uh, i think the book even goes back to i think the book is the swiss family robinson type uh, it's based off of so there's a lot to like about the show the nitpicks are minor and for me it's mostly how they structure the episodes and present them to get to the final point or the overarching plot and for that, it's a little iffy. But season one will carry you through. Great performances. Uh, just enough suspense. Although you start to see a trend where that formula, it starts relying on it. Like, there has to be a um, rusty bolt or a messed up hinge. You know, th these elements are going to have to make constant adventure and suspense kind of worked when you're going from planet to planet like the original series and they, this is like the beginning of it and it's a little weird but okay it's the formula they're using but i'm gonna get get with it you quickly get absorbed in it like i said visuals performances all top notch it just has little minor nitpicks so season one they end it got a little bit of the classic uh cliffhanger type thing and it's resolved almost to the end, and there's an element that's missing. Now, when it comes into season two, the structure and the format kind of hurt it again because you're doing things and making it a wild ride when you've got this overarching plot that I think you're hesitating too much on getting to. So they stretch it over the season now. Does it make it bad? No, I enjoyed season two also. But I can recognize the things that I wouldn't want to see in season three and season four. If you're going to do that type of thing, keep it um, tight-knit and focused. But it seems to be a little too old, all over the place where it, it values the shock and huge mishap over uh, a building storyline that you want to see some portion of it uh, shown. So I think they hesitate a little pulling back the way the arc is written over the season. Now, I enjoy the show. I enjoy season one, season two. And I could see where people don't 
enjoy it, but I would see some of the elements like uh, great performances and um, you know, like an episode or two here and there. But it is something you have to focus on for the general uh, understanding of where the show is different from the original. You can't come into it just thinking um, they're just lost and traveling through galaxies and landing on planets and then they meet a new race and something happens. They had to build in this plot from the beginning that in, interweaves between the function of I guess the military, or not the military, but the spacefaring program that started this project that gets them lost. And that's tying to Earth on how they're needed. And it just gets watered down through things that you don't feel it when they're still trying to blend in this um, crazy mishap type adventure show. So maybe it just needs its legs fine. But I thought season two could have been a little better. Other than that, it's a show I'm enjoying a lot. Uh, when it, when I hear if it's coming out, I get excited. I was waiting for season two. Although I'm getting in this type of trend of liking to watch things in bulk. I guess we can blame Netflix for that. And it's going to be enjoyable, I think, for most people. Uh, it has just enough of the kid and adult stuff, the parental the social issues they don't get too crazy although there are elements like i said that are a little too maybe a little unbelievable when you have to make up scenarios all the time but i think they're doing it okay i mean not in a uh an amazing show that uh hits everything and is just something i'm, I'm drooling over but fun enjoyable uh better better than most shows and to try to pull off uh something like this so I think it's definitely worth giving it a shot. Maybe give it the three episode rule. Or you just watch the first three, the pilot and the next two, see where they're going. I think you'd be hooked. It's got that good feel to it that a lot of shows don't have. You want to put kids into it because it's not uh, a plot or a spoiler. It's a family on a ship and there are numerous uh, families and people on a station and without giving too much away that's kind of how it starts and you get you know those elements are woven through the storyline where in the original they might not have been in the original uh, TV series from 1965 you know they're gallivanting around the galaxy and there's um, you know crazy zaniness happening this is trying to do a good blend uh, I think it works, and give it a shot. I, I think most people will enjoy it. I think it's something that will work for a lot of people, for families, for kids. Eh, well, you can trust me or not. You know, it's up to you. You know what to do on normal YouTube and social media stuff. I hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe out there. Bye-bye.